There's the objective reality, which no one really lives in because it's a third person perspective, right? So it's a hypothetical kind of reality, but conceptualizing it seems to be very useful. And then there's the phenomenological perspective, which is your experience is actually reality, and that's what counts. And those two things aren't the same. And that's sort of like the difference between objective and subjective. And it's sort of like the difference between scientific and moral. And it's sort of like the difference between materialistic and mythological. And so those are all dichotomies. They're paradoxical juxtapositions of forms of conception that seem to be hitting at the, this paradoxical relationship between being and becoming. So we considered both sides of these paradoxical uh, conceptual schemes as we walk through the class material. I read you this at the beginning of the class. This is from Einstein. He's trying to clarify what it is that we're doing when we practice science. And Einstein said, by the aid of language, different individuals can, to some extent, compare their experiences. And it turns out that certain sense perceptions of different individuals correspond to each other, while for other sense perceptions, no such correspondence can be established. We are accustomed to regard as real those sense perceptions which are common to different individuals and which therefore are, in a measure, impersonal. The natural sciences, and in particular the most fundamental of them, physics, deals with such sense perceptions. Well, it's, not a, it's, it's Einstein, and obviously Einstein was a great thinker. There are, there are things missing about this description of what constitutes science because the other thing that constitutes science is a description of the procedures that led to the emergence of the sense perception, right? You think about how a scientific paper is written, it's not only results, it's method and results. And the method is how I constituted my body in time and space to produce these particular sense perceptions. And so it's, it's a way of formalizing behavior and then pairing it with the consequences of behavior and then communicating in a way, in a way that someone else could hypothetically duplicate that. So, Einstein's pure focus on sense perception is not, it's not complete.